Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I wanted to come and talk about love in a marriage Huntsville, or as we like to call it, girl, <laughs> love, love and mug shots, Huntsville. Girl, look like everybody got a mug shot down in Huntsville, Alabama on this show. Anyways, all right, so Stormy. Stormy has to turn herself in. She has uh, a couple of warrants out for her arrest. And uh, it's basically due to, from what I don't know the story, I don't know the story, I don't know the story. How, how, girl, I thought I did not, girl, I thought I wasn't recording. Um, a woman, an older woman, who they say just happens to be a millimeter, came to one of Sarmi's addresses, her uh, business. And based off of Stormy's reaction to the woman, um, Stormy tried to paint the picture as if all she did was just kind of, I guess, what did she say? Curse her out or whatever. But clearly it was more than that. And I completely understand, right? Because if you have some possibly psychotic fan coming up to your job, you have every right, in my opinion, girl, whatever you get that come out of my mouth is what you get that come out of my mouth. And if I, I'm assuming that whatever happened, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just assuming that they said harassment communication. So did Stormy find the woman's information and did she curse her out through text, through DMs, through Facebook Messenger, right? And I forgot what the other one was about. Um, but I, I don't think that it was just as simple as Stormy tried to paint it like, oh, I just kind of yelled at her. No, girl, you was on that woman's neck, as you should have been. Um, but she's going through it uh, because she has to turn herself in. I don't think it's right, though. That's what I don't understand. I mean, I guess the lady popped up at Stormy's warehouse. And then Stormy, basically, girl, was on her neck. And I'm assuming that even after the woman left, Stormy, did, like I said, did Stormy continue, not, not continue, but did Stormy then, like, was she, like, upset and was like, you know what, I'm gonna cuss her out some more, and then, like, went to her DMs? I don't know. Anyways, nonetheless, Stormy has to go take a, has to go turn herself in. She is stressed out. She says, girl, if I'm going, if I'm going to turn myself in, um, then I'm gonna be cute for my mug shot. So she got her glam squad there, girl, the, the girls get her wig together. Her makeup. She got on a little Fendi shirt. Girl, girl, Stormy remind me of me. Girl, Stormy said. <laughs> Stormy said, "I ain't never been to jail. I hope I. I hope I never have to go." <laughs> okay. Um. Stormy said she was in jail for fifteen minutes. <laughs> girl, Miss Think said she had an anxiety attack. <laughs> girl, she said the guards had to come talk to her. <laughs> Girl, that sounds like something that I would be going through. Girl, I would be, be back there, girl, having to put my head between my legs. I can't breathe. I need a paper bag. Girl, I need somebody to rub my back. Girl, please rub my back, girl. Girl, I'm in there. Girl, I'm in jail for 15 minutes, girl. And girl, I done threw up. Girl, I'm shaking. I'm nervous. I'm trembling. Girl, okay? Anyways, I will say that one of the realest moments that I've seen on this show in a very long time is I think it was the hairstylist. So one of her, so I, so one, it was one of the girls in the room with her when they were getting her ready to go to the um to to go, to go turn herself in. She basically said, "You need to center yourself. You keep going and going and going." And I was like, and then Stormy started crying. I was like, "Baby, this is probably one of the realest conversations that they've had on uh, Love and Marriage Huntsville in a very long time." Um. We'll get into Betty and Stormy at the end. Um, what's her name? Courtney's mother was there to kind of let her know it's going to be okay. Um, because in Stormy's head, like, she really hasn't done anything wrong. I don't think Stormy did anything wrong either. Clearly, the law states <laughs> says otherwise. That's why she had warrants out and had to go turn herself in. Um, but Stormy's looking at it through a lens of like, this lady came to my job, right? And 
like, you know, now I'm this multi-millionaire viral sensation. Um, and now I'm having to go turn myself into jail. <laughs> you know, I, I got it. I got it. Uh, I'm with Stormy on this one, nonetheless. Um, Latricia, Letitia, and Destiny meet up. Great. It wasn't nothing there. Good. It was just talking about what happened at uh, Stormy's, uh, I think, Lover and Friends event with, you know, with, um, with Destiny and uh, Storm, uh, Sunny and the conversation they had. Girl, Destiny basically says if she still wanted Moses, she could have him. Girl, I believe it, but girl, I feel like anybody, girl, let me shut up. I feel like any woman who was willing to probably take care of Moses could have Moses. I feel like Sonny is over there taking care of Moses. Um, but I don't know. That's just what I feel. Um, oh, so... What's her name? Latricia. Latricia has her sister come over. I believe her sister said that she lives in California. Um, the sister is so pretty. Her and, Latric her and Latricia look just alike. Um, <laughs> I'm about to say something that's going to sound so mean. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say it, but I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. So when Latricia was setting a little spread up, I was like, oh, you know, Latricia is into her body. Ken is into his body. Latricia, when I say Latricia's body is probably one of the best bodies on television. Girl, Latricia's body is sickening. Girl. Um, so she, she was sitting out some little fruit, watermelon, you know, strawberries, uh, pineapples, grapes, you know. And then I saw a bowl of girl, original hot, extra crispy. Hot wings. I said, girl, who's she getting these wings for? Because <laughs> Latricia don't give me just like she gonna sit in the living room and just eat some wings. <laughs> she give me like, she'll eat some fruit, right? Maybe some salmon. Maybe a steak, you know. But she's not giving me just wing, girl. <laughs> and girl, with her sister, who's a little thicker, <laughs> girl, walked through that door. I said, oh. <laughs> she got the wings for sister. Okay. <laughs> now it makes sense. <laughs> I know that's right, girl. Girl, matter of fact, girl, don't judge me. I'm going to uh, Wingstop. As soon as I get off here, I'm going to the grocery store, and then I'm going to Wingstop and give me an eight-piece wing. I want all flats. I want a, I want extra crispy. I want six Louisiana rub, and I want two original hot. <laughs> and then I'm probably going to get me some corn. They have this corn that's so good. Yeah, and then I'm going to get me a sweet tea with extra ice. That's what I'm going to eat tonight. That's going to be my dinner tonight. And then tomorrow, I'm going to try to eat me a salad. <laughs> okay. Um, anyways, and so... <laughs> and the real, I, I do eat drums. <laughs> Girl, this is so random. I do eat drums, but the thing is, I don't like... I like I like for my drums to look like a hot... Like a drum. Like, I, like I, I feel like a drum should be, like, no bigger than this. <laughs> Girl, like... A, a wing should be a wing. But, girl, sometimes some of these wing places be giving you drumsticks. And, girl, that just turns me all the way off. And so I would rather just get flats. Um, even so, sometimes I'll be looking at the flat side. Girl, this is a big flat. But I can eat a flat, right, before I eat a oversized drumette. Girl, that bothers my soul. Um, but if I feel like the wings are normal size, then I'll eat drum. I'll eat drums are wings of our flats anyways um and remember when wing stop used to um they they had this thing where they had the jumbo wings do y'all remember that i know y'all remember that this was like years ago this was probably like ooh, ooh, girl probably like 10 not even 10 but probably like 15 years ago when they really started promoting like the jumbo wings and i used to be like girl, why do y'all want jumbo wings all right, so the sister comes over, they have a conversation. The sister really doesn't know what's going on with Latricia and her marriage. I get it, but I don't get it. Like, the sister didn't know that Latricia and her husband have been separated for like four years. Okay, the sister lives in California. Okay. 
She lives in Huntsville, Alabama. Okay, that is not right up the road. But four years is a long time for your sister to be separated and you not know. That's a long time. So I'm thinking either they may not be as close, which is fine, or either Latricia has been lying, which I can believe that. Because <laughs> Latricia don't give me like she tell it that she tell all the tea, right? Um, but either way, she tells the sister that her and her husband have been separated for four years and her and Ken have been living together for like a year and the sister is shocked. Now, I will say the year stuff, I can see how you might not know that. Like, like the sister said that she knew that Latricia and Ken were just doing a little, you know, you know, you know, but she didn't think it was that serious to where they were just, where they were living together. Um, I guess she knew that the sister and the husband eventually separated, but she didn't know that they had been separated for four years. Um, I will say this much. The sister didn't come across as too judgmental. She didn't come across as someone, you know, she told Latricia at the end that she just wants her to make, she just wants her to be happy. But I can also kind of understand why Latricia probably does not tell her family all of her business. One, is none of their business. Two, if you come from a family that is traditional or they put a lot into marriage and you remaining married, right, through better or for better or for worse, like the sister said, um, and then you have parents who've been married for 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 115 years, right, and marriage is really put up here, I could see how Latricia, whose marriage has come to an end, how she may not want to tell her family, girl, it's a wrap over here. Because again, that's not how her family, it seems like to me, that's not how, how her family operates. It gives very much, girl, through, for better or for worse, you know, through thick or thin, you're supposed to stay married. So I, I, I get why Latricia didn't tell her family shit, <laughs> okay? Um... But when, it's, when it was all said and done, she told uh, Latricia that she's just happy, that she wants her to be, she wants her to be happy. Oh, did y'all hear the kids? Girl, that's what I'm trying, that's what, people be trying, like, this is a thing. I don't feel like getting into all that right now, but I'll just say this much. The kids be paying attention. Did y'all hear the son say that he likes Ken and, um, Ken has made his mother softer. And every time he sees Ken and his mother, they're always laughing and joking. Girl, that's the type of relationship that y'all want y'all kids to see. A relationship where, girl, it's, it, it, it appears as though it's healthy. And it's loving. And it's caring. And every time I look up, my mama and her new boyfriend are always laughing and joking. That's what you want your kids to see. You don't stay, girl, I was going to tell the whole thing. You don't stay in, you, let me shut up. You don't stay. Stop staying in relationships just because you got kids with somebody. But when, when, when what the kids are seeing is not what they need to see, right? So now she's with a man who's, of course, not the biological father. But the, the, the son is seeing something that is, oh, this is how a relationship is supposed to be. My mommy is always laughing and joking. She's actually softer now. Girl, probably because that man was wearing her low. And another thing too, girl, I hope the sister in the family realize, like I don't know the ins and outs of uh, Latricia's marriage, but Stormy called that man Mr. And I will never forget it. So I hope the family realizes that while yes, you know, I guess marriage is supposed to be whatever y'all say it's supposed to be. But girl, they're also calling her husband Mr. So, hello? Anyways, shout out to the kids. Um, oh, the daughter was happy because she gets another sister. So that's a good thing. Um, well, she gets a sister, not another sister. 
Um, the guys meet up. Girl, I'm not. I'm not playing this game with Martell. I'm not. Martell and Latricia, as far as I'm concerned, they fucked. <laughs> in the conversation. Girl, I don't care what nobody say. Now, Martell did say. So basically, Ken. What's his name? Oh, I forgot his name. Chris. Chris, right? Chris, Martell, and Courtney, they meet up. They go bowling. Chris was asking some good questions, though. I ain't gonna lie. I said, come on, Chris. Ken says that basically Trisha was mad at Martell. I'm with Chris. Chris say, how are you supposed to know her? Where did you meet her at? I still don't understand why she's so mad. Girl, I said, come on, Chris. Come on. Girl, yes. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> if y'all don't really know each other like that, then why is she mad? And where did you meet her at? Where did you meet her at? And how are you supposed to know her? Girl. Did y'all hear what Martell said? That, um... I never met her through my brother. <laughs> Did y'all hear when Martell said I never met her through my brother? <clears throat> so how did you meet Latricia? Martell ain't telling the whole story. Martell says they didn't do nothing. That's what he said. He said he wouldn't remember her because it ain't like they did. They like it, like they ain't did nothing. So why would he remember her? I've said this five times. I'm gonna say it again. I really want to know Ken's react reaction now. Now that he's watched this show and he's seen that not only was Martell being weird, but also your girlfriend was being weird too. It's not on all, you know, I ain't trying to take it for Martell, but it ain't all on Martell. Martell was being weird and Latricia was being weird. Latricia was being weird and Martell was being weird. It just wasn't Martell. Girl. And then Martell says that he's trying to get married. Girl. They ask him to who his baby mama. Girl, when I tell you, girl. Girl, I, girl, I know that girl feels like a dumb E. <laughs> Yeah. Girl, I know she feels like a dummy girl. Like, when I tell you Martell, girl, every time Martell has the chance to even claim her, you know, y'all like to be claimed, not y'all, but y'all. Girl, he never do it. <laughs> he never, I ain't never heard Martell say one time that he want to be with that girl beside the, the girlfriend, the baby, the baby mama. I ain't never heard him say, girl, he, it, girl, he do, girl. I, girl, girl, Ariane, I know you be feel, I know you be feeling real dumb. Probably not. Anyway, Stormy and Betty. <sighs> I will say this much. I actually agree. I well, not agree. I actually understood a part of what Betty was trying to say. I'll give her because at first I was like, uh, uh um. Stormy feels like her mother was not there for her when she needed her. Stormy really was going through it because she had to turn herself in. Um, Stormy's mother, which is Betty, told her um, that's what you get for being on reality TV. Once Stormy explained what her mother meant, I was like, oh, it kind of made sense to me. Stormy said that what her mother means is they basically tried to tell her about Melody. You know, Stormy's mother was a fan of the show. So Stormy's mother had already come into the show with these preconceived thoughts about Melody based off what she's seen through the show. So she did not like Melody from the get go. Um, so she was trying to tell Stormy when Stormy told her she was going to do the show to stay away from Melody. Because in a nutshell, if you fall out, this is what comes with it. 
So in Betty's head, from what I from what I was trying to from what I from what I understand is when she told Stormy that's what you get for being on reality TV, it was more so we told you not to do reality TV and we told you not to hang out with her because if you fall out, this is what comes with it. So now you fell out with her after I told you to leave that girl alone because she's no good. And now you have those crazy millimeters coming down to your job, right? I told you so. I got it. I got what I I, I, I get what Betty was saying. I ain't gonna lie. Girl, I get it. I get it. But it also, but I think Stormy just wanted her mother to just be there. Like, girl, why does it always have to be, I told you so? Right? Why can it just be, oh, you know, it, it, I think it just would have been went a whole lot better if 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 Betty would have said, "Hey, I can't be there with you right now because you know I got mom." Because I think she takes care. I think she says she takes care of her eighty year old mother. So that makes sense. If Miss Betty would have just said, "Stormy, oh my God, I hate this is happening. I can't come to you right now. I'll try to get down there in a couple of days. You know, I got you know I got mama." She doing X, Y, and Z. I don't know how the mother is doing, but I can't get there right now. But let's say a prayer over the phone. I'm going to pray for you, whatever. But it does, it, you know, when, you, when you're on the phone with your mama, your mama is basically telling you, girl, it is what it is. <laughs> it's kind of like, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get that we old as hell. Like, we 30 and 40 and 50. But girl, if I call my mama because, girl, I'm about to go to jail, because this girl, because what I'm going through, I would not want my mama to be like, girl, I told you so, girl, I'm about to go to jail. And I, even if it is for 15 minutes, like my nerves are bad. So I get what Stormy is coming from, too. I get, I kind of get both sides of the argument in a way, believe it or not. Um, but I think that with, 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 with Betty, and you know, she said, I, you know, I don't apologize. Like, oh, girl, I'm sorry, mama or not, daddy or not, like, for you, for, for, for Betty to just be so concrete and her not apologizing, even if she knows she's wrong, you know, I don't apologize. That's some nasty work. That is not cute. That is not cute to be a grown ass person and not be able to apologize when you know you're wrong. Or just even acknowledge somebody's feelings, right? And that's what Betty's, that's what Stormy, Stormy's mother gives me like, Girl, it would just be a headache because, girl, no matter what, no matter what, right or wrong, she ain't going to apologize, especially if she wrong. And sometimes, girl, I get it. Yeah, let me shut up, girl. Um, but she does apologize at the end. She does say, I'm sorry to Stormy um, for basically not handling the situation better. Which on some real shit, she could have handled that situation a whole lot better. Girl, I get that Stormy is a grown 30-something-year-old woman. But, girl, if your daughter is calling you because X, Y, and Z is happening, girl, just be like, hey, I'm sorry this is happening to you. You know, mama's not doing good right now. Or, you know, I, I, I'll try to get to you in a couple of days. Just be, keep your head up. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the stuff that you should want to say to your child, grown or not. Not, well, I told you not to get your ass on reality TV. You're like, damn, girl, I'm about to go to jail. Girl. Even if it is for 15 minutes. Girl, I'm about to go to jail, girl. But, you know, it is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. That was pretty much the episode. All right, I'm gone. Let me make sure. I put Betty kind of making sense. I told you to leave that girl alone. Girl, Mel hasn't come out to tell the people to stop. That's another thing Betty that Betty don't like. Girl. I hear, girl, let me shut up. Um, when I say something bad about Melody, girl, Miss Betty feel like even do I even 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 if I talk trash about Melody, girl, I kind of get what Betty is saying. Girl, I'm sorry. I kind of get what Mel, I kind of get what Betty is saying. Betty basically saying, yes, I be talking shit about Melody, but then girl, all the Melody just come and attack me. I get what Betty is saying. Cause girl, I ain't say shit about you. So why are you getting upset? Girl. I said it about Melody. Girl. And if she ain't said shit, then why are you saying shit? Now, I did hear that Melody was down to the internet dragging the girls the other day. So 
That right there, I'm okay with. Girl, let Melanie go and drag Betty and drag, uh, and I was going to say Wendy, and uh, Wanda and all the other girls. Anyways, it is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all have a good day. Bye, y'all.